I had once read a champion has failed more number of times than what a novice has ever tried. You see, champions are normal human beings, just like you and me. But what separates them from the rest is their ability to never give up. Two times the current national champion UAE and MENA region, first international competitive figure skater Zara Lari, is every bit of a champion. Having won dozens of championships by now, Zara is now aiming for the World Championship and the Olympics 2018. Well, before we start your story, I really want to know about your childhood and how you were encouraged to get into a sport like this. Well, as I was younger, like we did a lot of sports like at the house, like mm -hmm. we used to always go play basketball and stuff outside. Um, but I always enjoyed doing ballet and gymnastics. Mm -hmm. So when I was in school, I was always in the school dances and I joined ballet and I did some gymnastics and like I was naturally flexible. So that was a good thing. But yeah. then once I reached like around 12 years old, I fell in love with skating and that's when my story began. So when you fell in love with skating, uh, did you find any challenge to convince your parents for you to continue in it? Well, actually, at the beginning, it was challenging to convince my mom mm -hmm. to start skating because she said, just focus on school. And she said, like, you'll get hurt, you'll get injured and stuff like that. So she was really scared. Mm -hmm. But then once I started skating and I took it seriously, the role switched. And then my dad was saying, like, OK, you know how to skate now. It's better to stop because it's against our cultures and traditions. Mm -hmm. And then my mom was helping me to um, tell him, like, no, I really love this. And there's no problem with me doing this sport. But I mean, after a while, both of them now support me 100%. And I mean, it means a lot to me that they support me. At that time when you started, there wasn't any Emirati girl doing figure skating. So uh, obviously, you must have faced some kind of obstacles from people around you after convincing your parents. Yeah, I mean, um, since I was the first one to ever do figure skating here, it was, first of all, it was hard to let the people understand what the sport was mm -hmm. since it was a win it's a winter sport and we're in a desert country so a yeah. lot of people didn't know about it exactly. and they didn't understand that it's not dancing it's actually it's an actual sport it's an olympic sport mm -hmm. so that was a bit hard to um, get the people understand it but once they saw it and they saw me in the news and the media doing the sport then they understood it and a lot of people encouraged me not only from my country but all over the world mm -hmm. um, so that's a great thing and also like um, in the figure skating world i was the first one doing it while like i was covered so at the beginning we got a lot of like during competition we got deductions because they said i was covered and it was like a prop and stuff mm -hmm. like that but that that's another thing that now since i did it we had to go and have a lot of meetings to discuss it but because of me now, they put it in the rules that you're allowed to be covered and do figure skating. That's amazing. So you really changed the dialogue there. Yeah. <laughs> so as you said, being in the desert and it's a winter sport that uh, you are into, how do you train yourself and how do you find good trainers in this country? Well, actually, like at the beginning when I first started, I never thought I would take it as a serious sport. sport. It, it was always like a hobby. So the first three years, I only did it once a week on a ladies' day, and it was only for like 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it was nothing serious. I never thought I would reach where I am today. But then after a while, I enjoyed it, and my coach at that time saw that I had like a talent in the sport. So she tried to convince my parents to try to take up more lessons and try to do more hours on the ice. So I started doing that, but I mean, now at the level that I am, like today, we realized that in order for me to be very successful in the sport, any competition, in order to push me to work even harder, and I don't have that here in the country, mm -hmm. so I always have to, from time to time, I go outside the country and I try to train, like in the US or in Switzerland, to get that competition and see other skaters my level. Mm -hmm. um, that will push me to work uh, harder. And you were also talking about your parents opening an, an institute. Yeah, my parents opened Emirates Skating Club. Mm. Um, so it's the first actually registered um, club under the Federation in the UAE. And that, that way we can bring in so many like high level coaches um, in the UAE. And that's how I'm able to bring my coach coming in. Her name is Alexandra Ivlova. So she's mm. coming in from Russia and that's who I'm training with. So, I mean, the opening the club, even though it's a huge financial burden mm -hmm. on my parents, 
but at the same time it's it's something they know it's going to help me and all the other uh, younger a uh, lot lot many people yeah. lot many kids who are yeah, dreaming so to be it. in your shoes being a sports person obviously we need to be mentally very strong because it's so much of our mind that really plays in in sports like this how do you train yourself mentally how do you keep yourself strong i'm um, actually i've been having a lot of difficulties with that because once you reach a certain level as an athlete it becomes more mental than physical because True. your body already knows what to do but it's more how to control the nerves during competitions and stuff like that and i've been struggling a lot to find sports psychologists in the country um, i've worked with two but they came in and they left so until now i still i still can't find sports psychologists that i can actually work with mm -hmm. and i think that's something that is lacking in the country which is sports psychology because like since I've like been in the media more. I have more of that pressure on myself. Exactly. So that's when I started getting nervous during competitions and stuff. So I think now at this level, especially trying to qualify for the Olympics, mm -hmm. I think I do need a lot of like a sports psychologist that can help me get through all of these pressure that pressure. I actually put on myself most Absolutely. of the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it is an interesting journey because you start it with any sport or as an athlete we start as a physical game but it yeah. all becomes mental after a while and we need to train our mind to be really successful. Yeah. Where do you see yourself uh, going from here? Well, I mean, obviously my goal is to go to the Olympics and mm -hmm. this year I'm trying to qualify for so many competitions and so many huge competitions. But at the same time, it's it's becoming more and more difficult because I'm having so many so much problem trying to find sponsors mm -hmm. um, because figure skating is such an expensive sport yes. and for me to be able to reach the Olympics, I need a lot of support in order for me to get to that level. And we've been having a lot of trouble trying to find these uh, sponsors who can help me. Um, but hopefully, I mean, hopefully I can find some sponsors at least because it's the biggest year and it, mm -hmm. it, this is the time for me to be going to Olympics. So, but I mean, I'm just working really hard and I think, I mean, as long as I'm working so hard for something, I think no matter like what happens, I'll accomplish my dreams and my goals. And you have accomplished a lot. From here, how would you help the next generation who would like to get into a spot like yours? I mean, um, I focus a lot on the younger generations because, I mean, they're the ones that are going to come behind me. Like, I'm not going to be competitive figure skater for the rest of my life. Eventually, I'll have to stop and I have to make sure that there are younger ones that are going to go behind me. Otherwise, all, everything that I'm doing is like pointless because once I stop, that's it, the sport dies. So, I mean, I'm focusing a lot on the younger generation. So I started coaching. Mm -hmm. So I coach a lot of young skaters. Um, and I mean, that, that's the basics of everything is the younger, the, the young skaters are the basics. And then once they hit a certain level, and then they'll be able to compete internationally and hopefully even reach above and be better than me one day. Do you come under pressure to look good? Because it's a sport where yes. uh, looks are very important. Yeah, yeah, especially in figure skating. A lot of the people judge you on how you look. Mm. Um, even like during competition, as soon as you step on ice, that's when the judges will immediately judge you. Okay, she'll be good, she'll be bad. Mm. She'll get good scores, she'll get bad scores just by the way you look. So mm. I think that that is something that is negative about figure skating because like it shouldn't be about your body image. Mm. It should be like about your ability and how you do the sport. Um, and I think a lot of skaters now are going through anorexia and all those kind of stuff because of it. So I think that's something we need to try to not focus on. Like the most important thing is to be fit, to eat healthy. And I mean, once you eat healthy and you're fit, you'll be able to do the jumps, you'll be able to do the spins and all those kind of stuff. Being an Arab woman into sports, there aren't many. Mm -hmm. How do you see yourself? Do you come under pressure at times? Because obviously you are a role model to many young Arab girls who would like to be in either figure skating or something else. How do you become an inspiration to them? So I think it's, it's like you can't immediately go to saying, okay, your parents, everyone's gonna accept it. But you just go like through stages. 
and and always remember that no matter what you do there's always going to be someone that is trying to stop sure. you so like until now there's so many haters out there who are trying to tell me like what I'm doing is wrong mm -hmm. but I mean the country supporting me my family supporting me so I mean that's all I need and that's all that's important you're doing amazing so proud thank of you. you thank you so much for coming on the show thank you for having me It was indeed a proud moment for me to spend some time with a champion like Zahra. It's personalities like her that motivate me in believing that nothing, absolutely nothing is unachievable and that all of us have a champion inside us. I would love to know about your own champion moments of life. So do write in to me with your stories when you didn't give up. Bye.